Let's talk business. This is how we're moving yours forward. Standard Bank, moving forward. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Adhesive technology specialist Henkel South Africa has set a benchmark in sustainability for the global Henkel brand by replacing its old chemical treatment plant with an environment-friendly option. Samantha Mulman has the story. After 15 years of treating more than 1,000 kilolitres of wastewater every month using traditional wastewater treatment chemicals, Henkel South Africa made a call in 2011 to re-engineer its effluent process with a particular technology in mind. Henkel Adhesive Technologies Operations GM Marnie Boerter elaborates. Part of the process was to look at the old traditional chemical treatment of effluent, uh, but we took our thinking hats off and broadened our minds and had a look at different technologies that could do this. I had previous experience with ultrafiltration and thought it might work in this case, so we contacted the supplier of this technology, Memcon, and they were willing to partake in this design process. In 18 months, we did various tests and multiple uh, samples, etc., to try and see if this technology can actually do this effluent cleanup. We knew it hasn't been done in South Africa so far, as far as we know, um, so we had to test it well. So after 18 months, we were very happy with the results and decided to uh, decide on this technology and we implemented it. The new effluent plant, which has been running since March, has significantly improved the chemical composition of Henkel's wastewater composition, which is now up to a thousand times better than the municipality standard for treated effluents. This means that Henkel has reached its global 2030 sustainability target for waste in less than a year. Boeta elaborates. With the effluent plant, the way we've constructed them, we've already achieved the target of reducing the contaminants that we let out into the public effluent system. Uh, we multiple hundreds of times better than the standard local authority measures. And by the time that we start reusing this water by utilizing reverse osmosis, we'll also achieve the target of reducing the volume of water needed for Henkel products by 100%. Treating engineers to a tour of Henkel's facilities, Boerta was able to show off the 2 million rand effluent plant, which is more compact than the previous one and features 54 ceramic filters contained in two steel modules. Everything below this roof structure is what, what we call the new effluent plant and everything outside of that is what the old effluent plant used to look like. Uh, so you can see it's a lot smaller. Than, than what it was. Uh, this plant has been designed to handle five cubic meters of effluent per hour, uh, which is the same capacity we had in the old plant. Uh, the old plant was a uh, traditional chemi chemical treatment plant for effluent. This new plant is based on ultrafiltration technology using ceramic filters. Um, it's run by a control unit, so it's 100% auto automated. Uh, it only needs somebody to have a look every now and then to make sure the whole process is running well. Uh, apart from that, it runs by itself. With the long-term goal to becoming a zero effluent plant, Henkel plans to attach a reverse osmosis plant to the back end of the new effluent plant, with the aim of recycling the company's wastewater for use in the manufacturing process. Boerta explains. In terms of the quality of the water that comes out of this plant at the moment, uh, it is far be below the municipal standards that we have to adhere to. By next year, this time, we would have added a reverse osmosis plant at the back end here, which will improve the water quality to such a nature that we can reuse it in our production. So it will become part of the product. It will be chemically pure. Other news making headlines this week, Unilever breaks ground on its 500 million rand mid-rand ice cream factory. Kumba and ArcelorMittal sign a holistic iron ore pricing deal following years of dispute and the investment bill imposes no new obligations on investors. 
Unilever South Africa has broken ground on an envisaged 500 million rand ice cream manufacturing facility in Midrand to drive the fast-moving consumer goods company's local capacity expansion strategy and exploit what Chairperson Peter Cowan describes as a swelling consumer market. Looking to the future, it's all about transformation and investing uh, increased capacity in South Africa. And this is part of a major expansion plan. Uh, we're spending somewhere over 500 million rand on this particular expansion. But last year, for example, we unveiled uh, Boxburg, where we're spending over a billion rand in terms of capital, uh, capital expansion. So this is part of a major investment. And uh, I think it does demonstrate our commitment not only to South Africa, but to the people of South Africa, most importantly, enhancing the lives of many people who will now have uh, jobs and job creation. Steel producer ArcelorMittal South Africa and iron ore miner Kumba inked an holistic deal recently aimed at resolving a long-running dispute between the two JSE-listed companies, while also potentially meeting the government's increasingly vociferous calls for arrangements that facilitate higher levels of resource beneficiation. What we are announcing today is an agreement that will take effect from the 1st of January 2014. It will regulate the sale and purchase of six and a quarter million tons of iron ore from either mine, either Tabazimbi or, um, or Sishin, uh, at the election of Kumba. We have uh, furthermore agreed a price, an all-in price, a single price in, in essence, from Kumba to us, Limital South Africa, for iron ore that meets the preset specification. So, it's a massive big change from what we had before where we had one supply agreement that governed uh, Sishin Ore and another supply agreement that, that governed what was essentially a captive mine uh, at, at Tabazimbi. And the cost overall will be governed based on Sishin, on the Sishin DMS plant, which again Norman will expand on, All right. um, on that Sishin DMS plant cost plus 20%. The contentious Promotion and Protection of Investment Bill of 2013, which aims to update and modernize South Africa's existing legal framework in respect of foreign and domestic investments, achieves a balance between the rights and obligations of investors and of governments and will impose no new obligations on investors, says Trade and Industry Minister Dr. Rob Davies. This piece of legislation, I think, uh, is something which uh, has been awaited for quite a while because, as you all know, um, as part of the process of modernizing and reviewing our investment uh, promotion and protection regime in this country, we have, in fact, uh, already given notice to terminate uh, a number of bilateral investment treaties. And one of the points that has come out is, uh, well, where's the alternative? And I think that uh, the bill uh, is actually uh, our answer uh, to that one. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.